in the name of the beloved Son, for the sake of the beloved community. Amen. I bring you greetings from your siblings in Christ in the Diocese of Olympia, just up the Pacific coast from you. On this day, I am honored to have been invited to share a little bit of the good news that we know and see in the one who is the beloved son. You know, there's nothing like a good story. Whether it's a story that's being told by a few friends over uh, a, a drink after work, or whether it's a story that we witness on the silver screen that moves us to tears, whether it's the story in a song that makes us laugh, or whether it's the testimony being shared at a funeral. Stories have power. They move us. We're about stories in the church as well. Every Sunday when we gather, we read stories, stories from the scriptures and stories in particular from the life of one. He came among us as one of us. He lived, he taught, he gathered, he healed, he loved. He gave everything he had to us, including his own life. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. But on the third day, he rose again. And he returned to heaven from whence he had come. Of course, that is the story of Jesus Christ. It is the central story of our faith. It is the story of all of the stories that we share. In his story, we see how God works. Time and time again, we see certain emphases in his teaching. We see certain themes in his ministry. And we see certain patterns in his life. Of all the patterns that we see, the most powerful and the most dynamic is the pattern of death and resurrection. That pattern is so important to us in the church that we call it the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. It is so important to us and so central to how we think about ourselves that we baptize people into that pattern. We make a big public to-do when we bring people forward to baptism to connect them with that pattern. And we say here in baptism, we die with Christ. And we go down into the grave with Christ. And then, as Christ is raised up to new life, we are raised up to new lives. New lives to be lived in compassion and justice. We go so far as to say his dying is our dying. Our dying is his dying. His living is our living. Our living is his living. We live in him. He lives in us. That's how important the pattern is to us. You might be asking, what does any of that have to do with Pride Sunday? Well, it has plenty to do with Pride Sunday. 
You see, the GLBTQ plus community is filled with stories. There is the story of the community itself, from Stonewall on down, and from Stonewall and before. And there are the myriad of stories of individuals in the community. And as we hear both the history and the various stories, we can't help but be struck by images of death and resurrection. In the story and in the stories of the GLBTQ plus community, we hear an echo of the story of Jesus. Think of it this way. In the marginalization and in the injustice that is experienced by the GLBTQ community, we witness the injustice that Jesus himself endured. In the pain of the GLBTQ community, we witness the pain that Jesus himself experienced. And yes, in the murders of countless people like me, we witness the crucifixion of Jesus. His story is woven into the story of the GLBTQ plus community. By the same token, we also see resurrection. When we see the resilience that is in the GLBTQ plus community, we are witnessing the resurrection of Jesus. When we see queer people out there raising their voices against injustice, in inequality, and in marginalization, we are witnessing Jesus being raised up. And yes, when we see the amazing ability to love and to maintain love, even in the midst of hatred, we are seeing nothing less than an echo of the love of Jesus for everyone. A love that is as bright as the rainbow itself. Beloved, in the GLBTQ plus community, we see Jesus himself present, alive, vibrant, at work. that story of death and resurrection and that pattern of living and dying is visible in the community and in the individual stories. Stories like the one I want to tell you right now, which happens to be my story. I am a transgender woman. I was raised male in a culture, city, and family that thought of me as male, told me I was male, helped me to behave as male, and at every turn reminded me from my name right on down that I am male. However, I knew that that wasn't right. Something inside me said, no, no, that's not really true. And as I grew through teenage years into young adulthood, I began to figure out who I really was. But I hid it. 
In the course of time, I heard God's call to serve the church. And I became a pastor. And I served in parish ministry for several years. All the while hiding my true gender identity. Not daring to reveal that underneath what looked like a male exterior was actually a female. Finally, after 12 years of publicly preaching about truth, I could no longer privately live a lie. You just can't sit up there and talk about integrity when you're not living it. And eventually, it broke me down. And so, I came out to my head pastor while I was still in the ministry, in the ministry of a church body that, to this day, cannot accept the ministry of transgender people. When I came out to him, I quickly found myself out, out of the church. There was no room for me. In one fell swoop, I lost my job, my vocation, my peers, my friends, my church home, my reason for living. I lost it all, and it felt like dying. In fact, to this day, I refer to the day I left the church as the day that nice guy died. Immediately upon leaving the church, I fell into a deep depression. Months went by. Days of which I have no memory. I experienced a crisis of faith such as I have never had in my life. I attempted suicide at least once. Once that I can remember. It was the low point of my life. Then, somehow, something changed inside. I, I can't explain it. I can't describe it. All I can say is, by the grace of God, something changed. And I opened my eyes and said, it's time, it's time, it's time. I began my transition. I began my life as Carla. It was the best move I'd ever made in my life. It would take time. It would take struggle. There would be pain. But living as my true and authentic self felt like coming alive. It would be years later before I actually got to the point where I understood that there's a connection between my life and his life, between me and Jesus. For you see, he died. And in a way, I died too. My life as a male ended. He rose. And in a way, I rose too. I began a new life. I began to realize that I am what resurrection looks like. I became to a point where I could now celebrate my life, celebrate who I am, and say, I'm connected with Christ by death and resurrection. I don't need to hide or be ashamed or somehow say that, oh, I'm less of a person now or, oh, I've got to keep this story secret. No, instead, I determined that it was now time to share this story. 
I began sharing my story with the church as a story of death and resurrection. I began to share my story with the larger GLBTQ community as a story of death and resurrection. And I began to say, yes, indeed, I am a follower of Jesus. I come from an institution that has done many horrible things to the community in the name of God. Horrible things that I renounce, but horrible things that were nonetheless done. Still, I cling not to the institution, but to the one who died and rose and has made me an example of what death and resurrection is. Little did I realize that while I was telling my story to my community, my community was telling the story back to me of how so many had also experienced death and resurrection. And I got it. I got it. I got it. Christ is in the GLBTQ community. And on this Sunday, that's something to celebrate. We celebrate the presence of Christ in the GLBTQ community as much as we celebrate the presence of Christ in the church. And so, my beloved, on this day, let's join the party, knowing that every celebration is a foretaste of the feast to come. And so, my beloved, let us join in the ongoing work of resurrection that is yet to be done, the work of turning marginalization into celebration, the work of turning inequity into justice, the work of turning hate into love. This is our work. This is our story. We mourn death. We face its reality. We celebrate resurrection and live into its reality. Not just as our history, not just as our heritage, but as our here and now, as our lives today. Amen.